Let the peace, love, and blessings of Jehovah God and His Christ be upon the entire world. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The climate of God's kingdom. Everlasting gospel delivered to the entire world by the Holy Spirit of Truth, leader Olumba Olumba Obu, the supernatural teacher. First lesson, Romans chapter 14, verse 17. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Second lesson, Romans chapter 12, verse 18. If it be possible, as much as light in you, live peaceably with all men. Golden text, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 21. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. Introductory spiritual chorus to be my disciple, be humble, be humble. To be my disciple, be humble as an infant. My peace I give unto you. Recall that at all times our Lord Jesus Christ started and ended his address with peace. Even after he rose from the dead, his first statement to his disciples was, My peace I give unto you. Whenever he appeared to someone, he made the same statement. He taught peace and practiced peace. He is the father of peace and tells us always to be in peace with one another. He is the embodiment of peace. People assumed that in the kingdom of God, pleasure is found. And so wherever there is a lot of delicious food, gorgeous clothes, parties to attend, gold, diamond, and other beautiful things of the mundane world, such is God's kingdom. And these are what you are looking for. So many African youths troop to advanced and rich countries of the world to seek greener pastures. Once they get there, they do not think of coming back to their underdeveloped countries anymore. They always feel that they have arrived in heaven and have no need to come back to hell. Let it be known to you that the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. The kingdom of God is peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Spirit. The kingdom of God is when you are in state of perfect peace with yourself and all people. God is found in a place where there is no quarreling, no fighting, no hatred, but love, peace, and joy reign. Such a place is the kingdom of God. God is the father of love, of peace, patience, righteousness, mercy, and orderliness. What, wherever he is, there is peace joy and goodness. Those who cannot fast should know that the kingdom of God is neither eating nor drinking. Do not be deceived that you are in the kingdom of God because you have wealth, wisdom, position or other forms of mundane possession. You may have the ability to organize daily parties for people but that does not depict the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is peace, joy, love, and righteousness in the Holy Spirit. 
You have to be in peace with all people, love everybody, and always bear fruits of righteousness. You must be merciful to one another. So stop seeking the kingdom of God in mundane acquisitions. The path leading to the kingdom is not found in money, in cars, houses, clothes, food or drinks. The kingdom is within you. Do not go about searching for the kingdom of God. Rather demonstrate peace, love, joy and righteousness in the Holy Spirit towards all people. It is then that you would know the kingdom of God. Recall the story of the king who was not satisfied with his abundant wealth because he wanted happiness. So he was taken to where he would be happy for that alone was his problem. The same is the problem of the entire world today. The place of joy is the kingdom of God. All the kings and queens and rich people of this world are seeking the kingdom of God, but they have not seen it. People of old sought and never found it. Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar sought it, yet he never found it. There is no amount of wealth that can satisfy man if he has not found God's kingdom. That is why you see people with great wealth, yet they remain not contented. They continue to blindly search for the kingdom of God without knowing what they are after for all that they are searching for is peace and joy when the jews and the pharisees asked our lord jesus christ when the kingdom of god would come he told them that the kingdom of god would not come in the manner to be understood by man but that the kingdom of god is within them and when he was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not by observation, neither shall they say, Lo here or lo there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. That was in Luke chapter 17, verses 20 to 21. The kingdom of God is not what can be physically seen. When rich people complain of having an unstable mind, what they are doing is searching for the kingdom of God. For that reason, you are always advised not to hate, quarrel or fight so that you may always have peace by so doing. God would always dwell in you and you would behold the kingdom of God. A virtuous kingdom. The kingdom of God is the Holy Spirit. It is neither songs nor dances. It is the Holy Spirit that bestows virtues such as good manners, kindness, peace, humility and others. And these lead to real joy many people have built beautiful houses yet they cannot live in them because there is neither peace nor joy or righteousness in such places of abode since they do not have the holy spirit it is impossible for them to have these virtues many have got degrees in different universities yet have no iota of righteousness. They do not have peace and joy. There are many here that boast of having seen God, but you would marvel should you draw close to them and hear stories of their activities. A group of people may be singing 
and dancing together, but a closer study of them would reveal the absence of peace in their midst. And since there is no peace, there is also no joy or the Holy Spirit in their midst. So the kingdom of God is not seen with naked eyes. It is peace, it is joy and righteousness, which is in the Holy Spirit. The apostles of Christ knew what the kingdom is. Consequently, when they were arrested and each given 29 strokes of the cane, they sang, they danced and praised God because the kingdom of God was within them and were filled with joy and peace in the Holy Spirit. If you see anyone who does not see, drink, speak, or practice evil, but lives perpetually in peace and love with all people, such a person dwells in the kingdom of God. Such a person will hardly experience anger or hunger or thirst or poverty. He does not even know what they mean. He has not the spirit of discrimination and segregation. He does not know the difference between fire and water, beauty and ugliness, because he does not experience them. He is constantly happy in the Holy Spirit. Nothing evil ever comes from such a person. Read the first lesson again. First lesson, Romans chapter 14, verse 17. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. The best spiritual weapon. Search yourself whether or not you have peace within you. Do you have righteousness and joy which comes from the Holy Spirit? What I mean is the inner joy of God. This is what makes up the kingdom of God. It is said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for they shall inherit the kingdom of God. Inner joy, righteousness, love and peace in the Holy Spirit constitute the kingdom of God. It is not what you can see or feel. Only those who are in the kingdom of God knows it. The entire world and the children of God are looking for the kingdom of God. You have no business with what we are saying if you are seeking for a wife or husband or children and wealth. But if you are looking for joy, peace and righteousness, which comes from the Holy Spirit, you are actually looking for the kingdom of God. Nobody except God can give you the kingdom of God. And he gives it to you if you practice love, peace, righteousness, and all his teachings. It has been said that a man who sacrifices himself would be used by the master as a vessel of honor. The moment you have peace, love, joy, and righteousness which comes from the Holy Spirit, it follows that you have the best spiritual weapon. If you purify yourself and have these virtues, you would no longer desire anything from the world and the entire world would be converted to God through you. You who pray that God should use you in his vineyard do you have peace, love, righteousness, and joy in the Holy Spirit? How do 
how do you then expect the Holy Spirit to use you when you are unclean? In just one second, the Holy Spirit can change the entire world. So, all He requires from us is peace, righteousness, love and joy in the Holy Spirit. For this reason, I would tell you a story, illustration of peace. A certain man had three sons. He called the eldest son and asked him to choose one out of the following things, i.e. children, wealth and patience. He added that he would have abundantly whatever, whichever he chooses, but warned him that he must choose only one out of the three. The first son chose wealth because he believed that anyone who has wealth is held in high esteem in the world. He invited the second son and presented the other and presented the offer that he should choose one out of the three, wealth, patience, or children. In response, the second son said that money and clothes are insignificant. So that man, man is the highest among all consequentially, he chose children and had a lot of them. And finally, it was the turn of the third son. When he came, their father presented the offer and the third son chose patience believing that patience is life. The first had so much wealth that he did not know what to do with it. The second son had so many children that he had not enough food for them. So the first and second son started having problems with what they had chosen. The first son used his money in suing people and imprisoning people. As a result of this, his riches that he attracted, his riches, he attracted a lot of enemies to himself and thus had no peace. Also, the second son was disturbed by his children that he virtually had no peace in his life. One day, the first son decided to hand over all his riches to the third son, who had both patience and peace. He invited his third brother and made his decision known to him. The second son also took the same decision to hand over himself and all his children to the third son who had so much peace. Both the first and second son handed their possessions to the third son. They accepted his leadership and supremacy and from that time peace and harmony reigned lavishly in the entire family. If you have peace, you can manage any situation without problem. Wherever peace, joy and righteousness exist, war, quarreling and hatred do not exist there. The kingdom of God is found in a place where peace, joy, love and righteousness in the Holy Spirit exist. Read the second lesson again. Second lesson, Romans 12, verse 18. If it be possible, as much as light in you, live peaceably with all men. The importance of peace. Do you know how important peace is to mankind? You are enjoined to do everything within your power to be in peace with all people. 
you can see that even in your family you cannot have sound sleep and mental calmness if you have no peace as long as there is no righteousness in the world there would be no joy and peace how can you claim to be seeking the kingdom of god when you still fornicate kill tell lies acquire charms and worship idols such claims are false since you still indulge in selfishness hatred and pronouncement of curses and cannibalism how can you find the kingdom of god when you are still quarreling creating division and segregation you are without love yet you claim to be looking for the kingdom of god how many people in the entire world are actually seeking the kingdom of god when you claim to search for jesus but do you know him and how can you recognize him if you see him many people claim to have seen god face to face but are they sure of this assertion the question is if they have seen god why have they not got peace and joy you say that you are looking for the kingdom of god nobody does that but where is the route that leads to the kingdom of god what does the kingdom of god look like you have no peace within you neither do you have peace with one another how possible then can you see or enter into the kingdom of peace of joy and righteousness you elope with someone's wife or husband and still claim to be seeking the kingdom of god you indulge in stealing people's property and disgracing others while deceiving yourself that you are looking for the kingdom of god with your wealth and craftiness you confiscate people's belongings is this an acceptable way of seeking the kingdom of god think deeply about this issue if hatred quarreling and fighting one another depicts the presence and glory of god how can someone who is quarrelsome claim to be looking for the kingdom of god from all this revelation it can be seen that the entire world is looking for the kingdom of god where it cannot be found man's effort is in vain can the kingdom of god exist where cheating and falsehood insecurity commotion prevail you eliminate wealthy people seek to snatch posts from those that are better placed in the society do all these actions portray you as a seeker of the kingdom of god have you not read the scriptures as commanded by god that as much as light within you you should live in peace with all people you are expected to love all people exhibiting truthfulness towards all so you have to make peace with your parents your children your wife and husband more so you are to make peace with your friends your enemies and all classes of people do you still claim to be seeking the kingdom of god since you do not adhere to the instructions of god can you be in the kingdom of god when you have no peace follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the lord that was in hebrew chapter 12 verse 14 how many people in the entire world are truly looking for peace how can you see god when you neither have peace not holiness who is that person in the entire world who is seeking for real joy 
you constitute a source of difficulty to others. You usurp others' positions and possessions, yet you claim to be seeking the kingdom of God. So long as you continue in evil practices, you would be deceiving yourself that you are seeking the kingdom of God again. Who do you claim to be seeking the kingdom of God when you make plans of revenging somebody for a mistake done to you? Have you not read the admonition of the master of the kingdom that you should not resist an evildoer? That, someone, that if someone slaps you on the right cheek, you should turn the left for him? But I say unto you that he resists not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. That was in Matthew chapter 5 verse 39. You must always overcome evil with good and do good always if you want the kingdom of God. Those who do not know God always boast that but for their toughness, they would not have lived to this time. Such claims do not give glory to God, for God is the only promoter, provider, and protector. Once you are the kingdom of God, you have no problems with anybody. If you go about oppressing and marginalizing others, it shows that you are not in the kingdom of God. You cannot see or enter the kingdom of God if you waste all your time praying for money for children and other mundane things. He who desires admission into the kingdom of God is one who knows that he is indebted to God and considers himself worthless. Such a person would always think of what he can do to promote the work of God. Virtues in the kingdom of God. You, claim, you can know the person who is in the kingdom of God by his contentment. He is contented with whatever God gives him and whatever and wherever he is placed. Such a person is happy for the fact that God made him a man, which of course places him higher than the angel. More so, he is exceedingly glad that he is privileged to be a child of God. He is always thankful to God for all that God has done for him and others. Such a person is he who is in the kingdom of God. Abraham was a friend of God because he had faith in God and was always thankful to him. So he was and is still in the kingdom of God. You are a child of God if you have faith in him. As a result, you would always humble yourself before God and obey his instruction. You would always be satisfied with what God has done. And by so doing, you would be a child and a friend of God, just like Abraham. This is the type of person God requires. There was a certain Beacon man who happened to be a town crier. He attended the Presbyterian Church, established in the community and was known to be a good farmer. One day he discovered that thieves have stolen most of his yam tubers and fruits from the farm and on a particular Sunday he took one shilling to the church for thanksgiving. At the church he expressed gladness that although he was so small but God made it possible for him to have a big farm like large enough to feed his family and others. 
He thanked God for making him a rich man. This is what can rightly be regarded as possessing a thankful heart to God. If all the people of this era had such a thankful heart, they would have enjoyed the kingdom of God. But unfortunately, many people are not thankful, even though they are given cities. Instead of being thankful, they still look for more which shows their ingratitude. The kingdom of God is not food and drink, but peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Spirit. So we should always seek peace, joy, love, and righteousness. Read the golden text again. Golden text, 2 Timothy, verse, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 21. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. You have heard the wonders that God accomplished through our Lord Jesus Christ. He did a lot of good works in the universe. When Christ shouted, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? The earth shook, the graves opened, and the curtains in the temple were rent from one edge to the other. The saints came out alive from the open graves, and there was thunder and lightning. It is true that through our Lord Jesus Christ the entire world is saved. God saved the world through his humility, his peace, love, his joy, his endurance and other virtues. When he was cursed, he blessed and endured all humiliation and torture. All his actions and utterances magnified the glory of God. Recall when he told Peter to put back his sword into his sheath. For all those who carry the sword shall die by it. He even restored the ear that was cut off by Peter. We would have prospered if we had emulated his humility, his long suffering, his love, his forgiveness and endurance. Also, we would have forgotten the evil done to us by other people. The most exalted name. There is a name meant to lead and protect us. Spiritual song. No matter how difficult a problem is, it is solved in the name of Olumba. Why is it, as in the song above, that when I use Jesus, you echoed Olumba? Do you not know it was our Lord Jesus Christ who humbled himself unto death and for that reason was glorified and exalted by God? Today his name alone is reigning everywhere. It is only the name of our Lord Jesus Christ that brings salvation. When mentioned, all beings must bow and worship that great name. No power or being would bow in worship when the name of Abraham and other prophets are mentioned. So God would exalt you if you humble yourself. If you, without complaining, allow people to exploit, persecute and cheat you for the sake of God, 
You would be exalted and glorified by God. God would exalt you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ if you hold fast to peace, love, joy, kindness, generosity, and patience. Recall that our Lord Jesus Christ pleaded with, the father, with his Father to sanctify his disciples through the truth. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. That was in John chapter 17, verses 17 to 19. You can realize that it is impossible to save yourself. Your parents cannot save you, neither can the government save you. There is nothing you can do for yourself or for another person. However, if you surrender yourself to the will of God, He would bear all your problems, since He would provide solution to them without seeking your assistance. Remember that Paul was so faithful that even his girdle was used to heal the sick. He believed and he believed in and used the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to perform miracles. Some vagabond Jews who thought that they could successfully imitate what Paul did in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, they accosted a demonic man and ventured to command the unclean spirit to come out of him using the name of Jesus. In response, the demonic spirit told the vagabond Jews that he knew Paul and he knew Jesus but did not know them. The afflicted man leapt, leaped out, pounced on them and they were overpowered. They all ran away, thoroughly beaten. In Acts chapter 19, verses 11 to 16, it says, And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul, so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, We adjure you by Jesus, whom Paul preached. And there were seven sons of the Sceva, and there were seven sons of one Sceva, a Jew, and chief of the priests, which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said unto them, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are ye? And the man in whom the evil spirit was, leaped on them, and overcome them, and prevail against them, so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. If you humble yourself, God would exalt you and use you to save your family, your community, and the entire world. God would empower you to rule even the angels as well as the entire mankind if you abide in his words. God would do the unexpected if you humble and surrender yourself to him. God does not want those who are boastful, arrogant, and recalcitrant. Recall when King Hezekiah of Israel was challenged by the king of Assyria, Hezekiah took the letter from Assyria to the altar and pleaded with God to come to his help. Hezekiah confessed 
his powerlessness to withstand the Assyrian king whose military powers had brought down many other kings under his control. He prayed to God to consider how a mere man whom he had created could challenge him to battle. So God promptly sent prophet Isaiah to inform Ezekiah that for the sake of his servant David, he would save Israel. God fulfilled his promise to Ezekiah. For the full story of Ezekiah and the king of Assyria, please refer to 2 Kings chapter 19 verses 10 to the end. You can see how God saves those who humble themselves and trust in Him. Was it not only our Lord Jesus Christ that God used to save the entire world? It was only our Lord Jesus Christ who accepted all forms of humiliation. The issue of humility was nothing to do with worldly possession or position. It does not entail bragging in public, but it has to do with total surrendering to the will and leadership of the Holy Spirit. God will use you as he used our Lord Jesus Christ to save the world only if you adhere to his injunction. Mankind is in a pathetic state and nobody would have been saved but for the love and grace of God. This divine intervention confirms the scriptures which states that if God had not shortened the days of suffering, more would have received salvation. We are assured that for the sake of his elects, God has made the days short. In Matthew chapter 24, verses 21 to 22, it says, For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. Now he has fulfilled his promise to the Gentiles, for what he had done to the Israelites, he has also done to the Gentiles. You have to humble yourself and do not complain or return to evil for evil. If you adhere to this injunction, he would glorify you at the end. Do not continue in fornication, in adultery, in idolatry, murder, immorality, division, and discrimination. You are to be a true child of God in thoughts, in words, and in actions. A stroke of the cane is enough for the wise. Let he who has ears to hear Hear what the Holy Spirit has imparted to the entire world. May God bless his holy words. Amen. End of quote. Peace in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father.